We would like all the questioners to keep their questions short and to the point so that we can entertain in the limited time as many questioners as we possibly can. Let us have the next question from the brother side. Assalamu alaikum. My name is Aditya Mashel Kar and I work for Dubai First. Uh, we are a finance company. Uh, I have a very simple one-line question. Uh, what and why is the difference between Sunni Muslims and Shia Muslims? Wa alaikum as salam, brother Aditya. May peace be on you too. MashaAllah, speaking Arabic, salam means may peace be on you. Islam is the religion of peace. He has the question, basic question, what is the difference between Sunni and Shia Muslim? Correct? Yes. Brother, there is no Sunni and Shia in the Quran. Read the Quran, there is no Sunni Shia in the Quran. Quran says in Surah Al-Imran, chapter 3, verse 103, Hold to the rope of Allah strongly and be not divided. You have to follow Allah and His Rasul. Follow the Quran and the authentic Hadith. Shiaism came later on because of political differences. It has nothing to do with Islam. In Islam, there is no sect. Quran says in Surah Anam, chapter 6, verse 159, If anyone makes sects in the region of Islam, O Prophet, have nothing to do with him. Allah will look after the affairs. There are many verses in the Quran which say, making sect in the religion of Islam is prohibited. There is no sect. All these are because of political differences that came. But in Islam, there's nothing like Shia Sunni. There's only Muslim. Muslim is a person who submits his will to God. So in that case, uh, which belief is more correct, Shia or Sunni? The belief which believes in the Quran and the Sahih Hadith is correct. The belief. <laughs> the person who believes in the teachings of Quran and the Sahih Hadith is correct. The moment you ask questions, if he gives reference from the Quran, he's correct. If he says, my sheikh says this, my sheikh said that, my imam said this. If the saying of the imam matches with the Quran, we match with it. Quran says in Surah Nisa, chapter 4, verse 59, Ati Allah, obey your Rasul, obey Allah and obey the messengers. And those who have been given the power of Amr, of commandment. But the verse does not stop there, it continues. But if the people of knowledge differ, go back to Allah and his Rasul. If two scholars say two different things, check up which scholar matches with Quran and Sahih Hadith. The one who follows this Quran and Sahih Hadith is on the straight path, is a true Muslim, the other is not. So brother, which one would you like to choose? Shia or Sunni? <laughs> well, sir, I'm, I'm a Hindu, so... Sorry? I, I'm a Hindu, I, I really don't know much, but it was just that I was curious to know uh, about, you know... No, uh, where did I thought... I thought now you have to decide. Should I become a Shia or a Sunni? <laughs> no, not really, sir. So I'm I thought a born a Hindu and I die a Hindu. <laughs> born a Hindu, brother, even I was born a Hindu. I don't know that I die as Hindu. You know what the definition of the word Hindu? Hindu by definition means a person who lives in the land of Indus Valley. The people who live in India are called as Hindu. Correct. This word Hindu is not in any of the religious scriptures. It was first used by the Arabs. When the Arabs came to India, they gave the word Hindi, Hindi hai. You know, when I go to Saudi and here, they call me Hindi. Hindi means a person Hindi. coming from India. Hindi. It is not a religion. So you are a Hindu, I am a Hindu geographically. Hindu is not a religious definition at all. According to Pandit Jawaharlal Nehru, if you read his book, Discover of India, he writes, the word Hindu doesn't exist in any of the Hindu scriptures before the advent of the Arabs to India. So Hindu is a geographical definition, brother, even I'm a Hindu, I come from India. And the Arabs call me Hindi, Hindi. Hindi doesn't mean idol worshipper. Hindi means coming from India. So I know you're a Hindu, I'm talking about a religious belief. If you're religious belief, do you believe in one God? Well, sir, I know where we're going, but uh, I'm a very strong believer of the fact no i that, don't uh, i'm saying a statement would not no change i'm not telling you brother beliefs. i'm not you telling you to change your religion put me in a mosque i'm that, not telling i'm not telling you change your religion if i ask you do you believe in god you said yes if i say do you believe in ideas you may say no then i correct you okay okay uh, so so yeah, your question is do you believe in do one you god? believe in one god no i so, believe in a lot of gods okay we have fine 30 through, 33 fine. Crore very good gods. very good now i want to help you don't become a muslim but I want to help you. Because you are not a Muslim, I want to help you more. Now you said you believe in Thaitri, Pro gods. Where you got this from the Hindu scriptures, correct? Now if you read Chandogya... I just heard about it, sir. From where? Honest, oh, so you believe... Cited. Oh, mashallah. So you believe in anything what you hear? Why don't you believe in what you hear from me? Well, sir... I, am I your enemy, brother? I love you. 
Brother, I love you. Where, where I come from, uh, it's, it's not that uh, I've just heard it from one person, the way you said it. Uh, but yeah, I've heard it from my parents, my uncles, and probably 1.2 uh, billion people in India believe Fine. exactly the way I believe. Fine. So, so, I, so it's not I that all of, all of us are all of us are doing something wrong. I'll correct you. There's something I'll tell which you. we are doing right, which is common between I disagree. us. Which I believe is Hinduism. I disagree that 1.2 billion believe. I do agree majority of the Hindus believe, not all. I know many Hindus who disagree with what you have said. Because those who have read the Hindu scriptures, where you get this from? From the scriptures. Correct. Anyone says from the mind, if your father tomorrow says 2 plus 2 is equal to 5, will you believe? If, oh, your, sir, father sir, I, I didn't if your father says 2 plus 2 is equal to 5, will you believe? Uh, well, not unless somebody corrects me. No, if your father tells you today, 2 okay. plus 2 is equal to 5, no, will you believe? I will not believe. MashaAllah, you're an educated man, therefore you won't believe, correct? correct. Now, I'm giving you reference from your scriptures. Okay. And you have to ask your father, in Hindu scriptures, as I mentioned earlier, there are two types of scriptures. One is Shruti, one is Smriti. Shruti means the word of God. Vedas, uh, Upanishads. Next comes Smriti, the Puranas, the Ithyas, Ramayan, Mahabharat. If you read Upanishad, the most superior, it's mentioned in Chandogya Upanishad, chapter number six, section number two, verse number one. Ikkam evidityam. God is only one without a second. It's a Sanskrit quotation, brother. Ikkam evidityam. God is only one without a second. It's mentioned in the Sveta Setar Upanishad, chapter number six, verse number nine. Nakasya kasij janitana chadipa. Of that God, there is no superior. There are no parents. It's mentioned in Sveta Setar Upanishad, chapter number four, verse number 19. Na tasya pratima asti. Of that God, there is no image. Pratima in Sanskrit means an image, a photograph, a painting, a picture, a sculpture, a statue. Sveta Sveta Rupanisha, chapter number 4, verse number 19 says, Na tasya pratima asti. Of that God, there are no images, no photographs, no paintings, no pictures, no statues, no idols. If you read the Vedas, I'm talking about the highest scriptures, I'm not talking about lower scriptures. I'm talking about Shrutis. Shrutis consists of Upanishads and Vedas. It's mentioned in Yajur Ved, chapter number 32, verse number 3. Na tasya pratima asti. Of that God, there is no pratima. Of that God, there are no images, there are no photographs, there are no paintings, there are no pictures, there are no idols, there are no statues. You will tell me, I know where you're taking me. I'm not taking you anywhere, I'm taking you to your scriptures. <laughs> I'm taking you to your scriptures. Fine? That's a different thing, your scriptures match with the Quran, what can I do? Furthermore, brother, if you read Yajurve, chapter number 40, verse number 9, it says, Andhat Vishanti ya asambuti mupaste. They are entering darkness, those who worship the Asambuti. Asambuti are natural things like fire, water, air, etc. Who says that? Yajurved. And the verse continues. They are entering more in darkness, those who worship the Sambuti. Sambuti are the created things like table, chair, car, idols, etc. Who says that? Yajurved, chapter number 40, verse number 9. Now, when your father told you about Thaitri, oh God, I don't know whether he gave you references or not. I'm giving you references. You can take my references. Note it down, take the video cassette, go and ask your father. Go and ask your pandit. I am not telling you to believe me blindly, brother. You believed your father blindly, you did a mistake once. Don't do the mistake the second time. If you know where I'm taking you, I'm not in a hurry. I want you to be a firm believer, not just because my father said. So tomorrow you can quote the scripture. Fine. Now, if you are a Hindu, true Hindu, you should follow the scriptures. Like the sister that came earlier, she asked me question once, she asked me twice, she asked me third time, she got convinced. You don't get convinced, no problem. You take time. She got convinced with three questions. I am not forcing you. It's not allowed in Islam. I am only giving you guidance. I Thank cannot, you for that, sir. I cannot, Thank you. I cannot give it unless Almighty God puts it in your heart. So if you want to search the truthfulness in Almighty God, all these references you can go and check up. Go and ask your father, go and ask your pandit. I want not you, I want your father to come along with you, inshallah. Hope that answers the question. Thank you very much for all the information, sir. May God bless you. Inshallah. The next question from the brother. Greetings to you in the mighty and matchless name of God. My name is Paul and I'm a student. I have a doubt 
I mean, uh, most people would also have, I mean, you've already spoken about free will and uh, things like that. I have doubts about free will as to what free will is and uh, do we have free will to do what we want to do. And uh, as you quoted uh, uh, chapter 2 verse 256 from Quran, there is no compulsion in religion and the truth will stand out from falsehood, right? So I am looking for truth and the truth will set me free, yeah? That is John chapter 8 verse 32. Correct, you're right. I mean, I'm not as great as you in uh, quoting things from uh, no, but great. Bible and Quran, whatever, but I just want to know as to whether we have free will and what free will is and uh, when they say, and the quotation that I've said that there is no compulsion in religion, what is compulsion here? I mean, I don't know sure whether it is, I've taken it out of context and quoted it, what was before it and what was after it because my friends couldn't explain to me what was there before it and after it. The Probably I'll have to read it and when you say there is no compulsion, uh, made to do like say, suppose you have to say prayers five times a day, right? Do we, is it compulsory? The brother asked two questions. The first question, what is a free will? And as Gospel of John chapter 8 was trying to say that seek the truth and truth shall free you. Jesus Christ, peace be upon said that. And he quote from the Quran, like Rafid Deen, chapter 2, Surah Baqarah, verse number 256. MashaAllah is comparing, you know, great. He says he seeks the truth, and I pray to God that may that truth set you free. Correct. As far as free will is concerned, free will means what you want, you can do. For example, today I want to destroy the full world. Can I do it? I can try, but I will not succeed. You understand? Free will means what is in your capacity. Whatever is in your capacity, you can do. Whether you're able to do or not, that is secondary. For example, in my capacity to give a lecture. You can try, like how you tried and you give a quotation. Whether you can give the full lecture, I don't know. But you have the free will to try. So similarly, you have the free will to rob. You have the free will to become honest. You have the free will to kill. You have the free will to save a human life. It's your free will. So free will means you can do what you want. No one can force you. Fine? No one can force you. Now coming to the question of La Ikhra Fiddin, chapter 2, verse 256. There's no compulsion in religion, but truth stands out clear from error. Here means you cannot force anyone to accept Islam at the point of the sword. I cannot take a gun and put it on his forehead and say, accept Islam. It's not allowed. I cannot force anyone, but when I give the logical reasons, for example, doctor says, you have diabetes. Don't have sugar. Oh, doctor is forcing me not to have sugar. Yes. He's compelling me. If I don't want to listen to doctor, I can go and yet have chocolate. Fine. So the doctor is advising you. But an intelligent man will not have sugar. Will have less sugar. But the doctor cannot force him. Brother. No, I think you're looking down. I'm wondering. No, I'm, I'm trying to concentrate Constant. more on you rather than anything else. Fine. So the thing is there that if the doctor tells you something, you can use the word, the doctor compelled me not to have sugar. But the right word is the doctor advised me and I'm following. Similarly, like, is it compulsory to pray five times? For a Muslim, yes. It's compulsory. Is it a compulsion? It's not a compulsion with force. If he doesn't want, he doesn't pray. He can say, I don't believe in Allah. No one can force him. Because he agrees with the system. Ah, if I pray five times, I am getting guidance from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. I am on the straight path, therefore I am praying five times. Like how a doctor advises you, don't have sugar. He wants to follow, he follows. You have to fast. It's advised by Almighty God. Surah Baqarah chapter 2, 183. Fasting has been prescribed to you as it was prescribed to people who came before you so that you may learn self-restraint. Your taqwa will increase. So I am fasting. No one can force me with a gun to fast. Is it compulsory to fast? Yes, for a Muslim. Is there compulsion in religion? No one can force me. I should fast with physical force. So that's talking about physical force. No one can physically force anyone to do anything. It's your free will. No, but then uh, why is it called, why is it that we, it is compulsory to fast, compulsory to... There are two types of compulsory. One compulsory is with reason and logic. The other compulsory is with force. What Quran is talking about compulsion is force. Like when doctor says, don't have sugar. Is it compulsory? Yes. Doctor says, compulsory, don't have sugar. Is the doctor forcing you? Literally, yes. With logic, not with a gun. Right or wrong? So the doctor is saying, compulsory, no sugar for you. If you have faith in doctor, you follow. If you don't have faith, you don't follow. 
So same way, this is advice given by Almighty God in the Quran. If you believe Almighty God is the creator, you follow. If you don't believe, you don't follow. So anyone who is a Muslim is a person who submits his will to Almighty God. The free will God has given, I can either go against the commandment of God or I can follow his commandment. After God has given me free will, if I follow his commandment, I am called as a Muslim. A Muslim is a person who submits his will to Almighty God. There is no physical force on me. The compulsion that's spoken in Surah Baqarah chapter 2 verse 256 is the physical compulsion. It is not the logical compulsion. Two plus two is how much? Four. I said it. Is it compulsory four? I mean, that's, that, that is free will, yeah? It is your choice Correct. to choose to You can say three also. Correct. You can say five also. If I can say it is three, then I can I have to prove it, right? No, no, you will don't prove you can say three. Anyone can do anything to you. I didn't get it, sir. You can say three also without proving. Can anyone do anything to you? If you say two plus two equal to three illogically, what can you do? But then they'll say he doesn't know math. So what's there? But you can say or not? Can you yeah, say but, or not? Yes. yes. That is a free but will. But people no? will call you. Ah, that is a free will. Correct. That's what I want. But if you say two plus two equal to three, people will say you don't know maths. So if you say two plus two is four, it's not compulsory. Same way. If you pray five times, you are a Muslim. If you say don't pray five times, you're not a Muslim. Simple. So it is a compulsion with reason and logic. So as you told, two plus two is equal to four is compulsory. Why? For a person who knows maths. For a person who doesn't know maths, he may not say two plus two is four. He may say two plus two is five. Two plus two is six. So this is compulsion of reason, logic, and iman and belief. So hope that answers the question. No, as in uh, why I uh, why? Uh, Do you have a new question? No, it's not a new question. It's like. Uh, so did I answer your question or not? Yes, sir. Okay. You answer the question. Yeah, okay. Do you have a new question? No yeah, problem, you can ask. Okay, what I'm saying is, it says, I mean, now you're saying it has, we have to do it five times. Now, if I say I do it ten times, hmm. but I'm not doing it at uh, the prayer time, say, Asar, I'm not doing it at Maghrib, I'm not doing it at these certain times, hmm. but I do it. Hmm. And uh, I do it when I'm, when I'm going to eat my food before the meal, I, I'll, I'll say my prayer. When I'm sitting, when I'm standing, when I'm walking, when I'm running, Fine. Correct. So, the, but now why, why, why is that word compulsory five times? Fine. That I'm not. Now, for a doctor say don't have sugar. Okay, doctor, I won't have sugar. I won't have salt. I won't have rice. I will die. Don't have sugar. Okay, I won't have sugar. I won't have rice. I won't have bread. I won't have food. I won't have non-veg. I won't have veg. Person will die. So you can't go overboard. Doctor says don't have sugar. Okay, at this time have medicine. You can have sugar at so and so time. Have limited. So this is because doctor knows. Now you try and become more intelligent than the Creator, than Almighty God. He knows better than you and me. Fine. If you say, no, no, I'll do like that, then you will suffer. So doctor knows the human body. Almighty Creator knows us better. So he's our Creator. He has given the advice. If you follow, you will be called as a Muslim submitting a will to God. If you don't follow, there's no compulsion of force. I cannot force you to accept Islam. Can I force you? No. No, you cannot because I have the free will. Correct. With your free will, some people like my answer, they accept it. It's not necessary you also have to accept. Tomorrow, if you agree, you're a seeker of truth. Correct? You're a seeker of truth, I'll free you. Because I'll ask, I'll seek, and then I'll know. Sure. Once you're convinced, you're most welcome. So I'm waiting for the day that you're convinced. Hopefully, inshallah. The next question from the brother. Yes, my dear brother, Dr. Zahagi. How are you? I'm sure you are tired, Anna. I have a very simple question. You know Sikhism, the foundation stone or Amritsar Gurmandar was given a chance to a Muslim by the name Mia Mir. Why, on the contrary, you say a non-Muslim cannot go to the house of God? What's your comments about it? Brother said, how am I? I said, Alhamdulillah, I'm fine. Am I tired? I never get tired of answering questions to non-Muslims. I never get tired. You're I'm, very kind. I have my flight tomorrow, 11 o'clock morning. You're fine. very kind. So for me, no problem. I love it. The more you ask questions, the more energy I get. You ask the question that a Muslim laid the foundation of Amritsar. Then golden why? Temple. Sorry? The golden temple. Golden the temple. Holy, place the holy temple. Place. Laid the foundation. So why can't non-Muslims go to Makkah. Whether I give the answer in my talk. If, if someone has permitted 
maybe Amritsar is not a place of sanctuary. It's not a cantonment area. Makkah and Madinah is a cantonment area. You can go to any other mosque. If you want to go to the mosque of Dubai, I will take you. Brother, it's the most you want to come to the Sikh religion, Amritsar, Golden Temple. I know that. I know that very well, brother. But it may not be as sacred as our Makkah and Madinah. If you want to go to any other mosque, you're most welcome, I will take you. But these two mosques, as I mentioned in my answer, they are the cantonment area and you require a visa. The visa to go to Makkah and Medina, these two mosques is to say with your tongue, La ilaha illallah, Muhammad Rasulullah. There's no God but Allah and Prophet Muhammad is the messenger of Allah. If you don't get visa, you cannot go there. If I recite those verses, can I go there? Yes, if you recite and you believe, you can, no one can stop you. That's no problem. So you want to recite those verses? To go there or because you believe in it? I did hear you re repeated these verses with the other people. I uh, did hear. And so I, do you believe in it? Uh, it's easy to repeat. No, no. Do you repeat? Do it's you a, believe in it? It's, it's a fact. It's there. It's a fact and the fact should be believed. So do you believe that there's one God? There is. Do I you believe in it. And do you believe that Prophet Muhammad is the messenger of God? By Without any doubts, yes. So he person the last prophet, yes. So a person who believes there's no God but Allah and Prophet Muhammad is the messenger is a Muslim. So if you say That's this and you believe that no one can stop you to go to Makkah and Medina. I am, principally I am a true Muslim because I have surrendered to the Mashallah, of the Mashallah. So would you like to say it in Arabic? <laughs> Congratulations, brother. Would you like to repeat it in Arabic, brother? Would you like to repeat it in Arabic? I don't mind. Okay. Ashadu. Ashadu. Allah. Anna. Ilaha. Ilaha. Illallah. Illallah. Wa ashadu. Wa ashadu. Anna. Anna. Muhammadan. Muhammadan. Abduhu. Abdu. Wa rasuluhu. Wa rasuluhu. I bear witness. I bear witness. I'm saying in English the translation. I bear witness. I bear witness. Bear witness that there is no God. That there is no God. But Allah. But Allah. And Prophet Muhammad. And Prophet Muhammad is is the messenger. Is the messenger and servant of Allah. And the servant of Allah. Servant of Allah. Mashallah. Mashallah. <laughs> Brother, may Allah reward you. We welcome you to the fold of the religion of peace. And inshallah, when you want to go to Makkah and Medina, please let me know. I will sponsor your trip. Thank you inshallah. very much. Thank you very much. God bless you. Inshallah. <laughs> I like your spirit. I like yourself. God bless you. Keep spreading this message. People need it. World needs it. World needs a peace. World needs the peace leaders like you. My blessings with you. My good wishes with you. The next question from the brother here. Good evening. My name is Rahul. I work in an ad agency in Media City. I have to say, you've confrontation handle a lot of seasoned ho gaye. And uh, I would like to ask you questions on two topics, with respect. Uh, the first is, uh, I do agree with you that uh, when you marry your direct brother, the likelihood of uh, handicapped children is very, very high. But uh, I also agree to the fact that God, man was created with one pair and then they propagated from there. But when you put the two together, it creates a little confusion. Because if you marry your sister, which obviously the first few did, we should all be some level of handicap, you know. Mashallah. Brother asked a very good question. He tried to link the question that was asked yesterday and the question asked today. I wasn't there yesterday. <laughs> uh, anyway, the question asked yesterday was that if all humankind has been created from one pair of male and female, how did humanity come into existence. So then I said there that the rule that time was, today the rule is that marrying among close brothers and sisters is incest. But that time the rule was that you cannot marry brothers and sisters of the same delivery. Adam and Eve is the first pair of human beings, later on their children, but marrying brothers and sisters of the same delivery was prohibited, but different delivery was permitted. Different, I'm sorry? Different deliveries. Deliveries. If brothers and sisters born in the same delivery, they were not permitted to marry. But different deliveries, they were permitted. And later on, the rule came that marrying brother and sister were the same delivery or different delivery is prohibited. The rules keep on changing, but the final concept, the basic is same. Now coming to your question. That if 
humanity has evolved, then Adam and Eve, they would have been handicapped. So that's from telling you, it is not 100% that if a brother and sister marry, they should be handicapped. It's not at all 100%. Chances are more, maybe 1%, maybe 2%, it's not 100% at all. For example, if you have extramarital sex, not that you will get AIDS. It's not a must, you will get STD. Chances are there. Whatever, it's not a must. For example, if you jump from the first floor, if you jump from first floor, there's chances you'll die. Chances. Yes. What? Maybe one percent. Maybe two percent. If you jump from hundred floor, chances maybe ninety-nine. Correct? I agree. So just because if I tell you if you jump from first floor, you may die, that doesn't mean you have to die. The chances may be half percent, point one percent. First floor is not very high. So similarly, there are chances. Doesn't mean that the person will have genetic problems. So this is what when you pose the question, you should know the percentage. The percentage is very small. And furthermore, that proves that previously it wasn't the case. So what we realize that this is not a must. It's not a must. But previously in the olden days, yes, brothers and sisters also got married. But that time nothing happened. It's not a very high chances. And doctors, is it possible? Any doctor will say it's possible. If brother, sister got married and did not have genetic problem, very much possible. No one can debate. Chances are there, but it didn't happen. So that's how humanity was evolved. And the ruling about the consanguine marriage I already told you earlier. Sahih. Do you have any other question? Yeah, another one actually. Sure, most welcome. Now, now this is with regards to the practice of sunnat. I am told that it is uh, actually emulating the practices done by Prophet Muhammad. And uh, if we're only supposed to bow down to the formless God, why do we follow practices which are done by a human incarnation, particularly things like growing your hair to a certain length, which may not have a particular significance in terms of benefit, or kissing the Hazrat Aswad when someone also declined that you're just a stone, and Prophet Muhammad didn't kiss you, I wouldn't do this either. Brother, that's a very good question. That's a very good question that when we agree Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him, is not Almighty God, why do you have to emulate him? Why do you have to copy him if he's the incarnation of He's not the incarnation of God. So in your sentence, a human incarnation, a human form. He's a human being. He is the best human being, but he's not God. Why do we follow? Because Almighty God has said that. Quran says in Surah Nisa, chapter 4, 59, Atiullah, ob Rasul. Obey Allah and obey the messenger. God has said, God said, follow the prophet, we follow. For example, I'm the boss of a company. I tell, follow my general manager. Now, you will say, why follow general manager, boss? Boss is saying so. If boss says, you have to follow. Unless the general manager goes against me. And if the trusted general manager never goes against me. So similarly, the prophet will never go against the teachings of Almighty God. It is because he is the messenger who has got the message of God for us. So when you emulate him, it gives us no blessings. But we can't worship him. We love the prophet. We revere him. We love him. We obey him. But we don't worship him. So people who go to Darga, Khwaja Mohinuddin Chisti and all this, this is wrong? It's nowhere mentioned in the Quran to go to Darga. There's no hadith saying go to Darga. And the second part, the significance of Hazri Aswad? Hazri Aswad again, because the Prophet kissed it, I'm emulating. It doesn't become the fard. It's not compulsory you have to do it. Sunnat means you will get blessing. But in Sunnat, if you don't do, there's no negative point. In fard, you have to do it. If you don't do it, negative points. Like praying five times, you have to do. Don't do negative points. Sunnat means if you do, plus points. If you don't do, no negative points. So these are additional bonus points. So if you want bonus, you can do it. Not compulsory. If you don't do also, no one can say that you're not a good Muslim. So when you do it, you get additional bonus point. And a good Muslim tries to get more bonus point, but no one can say it's a sin. Therefore, it becomes the sunnah. So Prophet kissed it, we are kissing it. Even if you don't kiss it, yet there's no problem. Hope that's the question. Sahih. Thanks very much. You're welcome. The next question from the brother side. Uh, hi, Dr. Zakir Naik. My name is Sinto John. I work for RAK Ceramics as a sales executive. I'm a Christian and a strong believer in Jesus Christ as my God. I am well aware that all Muslims do consider Jesus Christ to a high regard as a prophet. Uh, my question is regarding the uh, issue on prohibition of pork in Islam. 
my first question is do you consider all the words of Jesus and the miracles performed by Jesus as mentioned in the Bible and uh, if so uh, let me explain to you one thing the premise in which Christians believe that pork or no food is prohibited is uh, from the gospel when Jesus says that uh, whatever comes into you goes out of you but what comes from your heart is what is what makes a man pure or impure so if you consider that then why do you think and if you consider Jesus as a prophet then why do you say that uh, pork is prohibited in Islam and if not what do you think Jesus meant by what when he said that before I answer the question I'd like to welcome the chairman of the Dubai International Holy Quran Award Mr. Ibrahim Bumala and also the deputy chairman Dr. Saeed for giving us a wonderful opportunity and making us available this hall till so late also mashallah I'd like to thank him and I pray to Almighty God that he gives more opportunity for people of Dubai to hear such lectures and so that more and more people get hidayah and inshallah inshallah the thawab of the people accepting Islam will also go to the Dubai International Quran Award inshallah to Dr. Ibrahim Bumala and also to Sheikh Muhammad inshallah the brother asked the question that do I believe in the miracles of Jesus Christ mentioned in the Bible brother I believe whatever is mentioned in the Bible if it matches with the Quran I believe in it if it goes against the Quran I disbelieve in it if it does not go against does not match it is ambiguous whatever is matching with the Quran I believe in it as far as the second part of the question is concerned that you say regarding the prohibition of pork it has been nullified because Jesus Christ peace be upon him says whatever comes in to you goes out and main things from your heart how does this nullify you fail to realize that means you are not reading the Bible Jesus Christ peace be upon him said in the gospel of Matthew chapter number 5 verse number 17 to 20 it says think not that I have come to destroy the law of the prophets I have come not to destroy but to fulfill I have come not to destroy but to fulfill whosoever shall break one jot or tittle from the law he will be called least in the kingdom of heaven that means you cannot break one jot or tittle from the law that's what Jesus Christ peace be upon him now you pick up another verse and says what comes into you goes out what is from your heart you can have pork where does it mean you can have pork you're contradicting your God Jesus Christ peace be upon him it says think not that I have come to destroy the law of the prophets I have come not to destroy but to fulfill unless the heaven and the earth pass away not one jot or tittle can pass away from the law until they're fulfilled and whosoever shall break one law or tittle he shall be called least in the kingdom of heaven whosoever shall keep it and teach men the same they shall be called great in the kingdom of heaven unless your righteousness exceeds the righteousness of the scribes and the Pharisees in no way shall you enter the kingdom of heaven so if you want to go to Jannah you have to be better than the Jews you have to follow each and every commandment of Moses peace be upon him this is the teaching of Jesus Christ gospel of Matthew chapter number 5 verse number 17 to 20 okay if that is so then what do you think he meant when he said that whatever you eat comes in I mean, whatever comes in out and goes out of you what is from your heart is what decides what is pure or impure it is simple what comes in goes out what's the problem in that no, the whatever question... you eat goes out is there any problem in that no it was asked in relevance when Jesus disciples were questioned by the Jews that why are they not following the traditional ceremony of washing their hands before eating food that's when Jesus replied that don't you understand that what you eat doesn't matter if it is pure or impure what it, what you eat it come it goes into you and comes he, out of he you. didn't say it doesn't matter what you're eating is pure and impure that's your thing it's not mentioned in the Bible that way no, it is mentioned in the Bible that what you does eat, it say that whether what you're eating is pure or impure doesn't matter does it say that no it doesn't say I'm sorry ah, okay. so please please don't put your words in the Bible please fine 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 but what I'm quoting is verbatim Fine. You can check up. I'm quoting from my memory. I don't have the Bible in front of me. But what you're saying, you're putting your words into the Bible. No, but he definitely said that what you eat comes out of you. Of course, what you eat has to come out. But what you eat has to come out. We are human beings. He wouldn't. He wouldn't simply state that for I don't know for. It no is simple. Sake. What you eat comes out simple. Your heart means it is from your heart. That means your heart should follow the commandment. No, because Jesus he, Christ, peace be upon him, said earlier, don't break one jot or tittle. So if your heart is in it, you will not break a single jot or tittle. Simple explanation. Fine, you don't have to be a doctor of divinity. He was trying to prove the Jews wrong by saying that it is not important. No, not at all. He wasn't trying to do that. That's what you think. That's what the church tells you. It's plain black and white. No, Jesus no. said you cannot break one jot or tittle from the law. So I'm where is he telling the Jews to break the law of Judaism? He's not telling that. 
he is not giving any indication for the Jews to break the laws of Judaism. He is telling them to obey. It is your understanding of the Bible. But Nowhere he, does the Bible say that. He did think that the Jews were not completely obeying the laws. They Correct. Had. I agree with you. They were not completely obeying because they did not believe in the fulfillment of the Messiah. Because the Jewish scripture says there is a Messiah to come. We Muslims, we believe in it. The Jews don't believe. So he was trying to explain to them, I am the Messiah. But that doesn't mean he was trying to break the laws of the Jews. He was trying to fulfill. Think not that I have come to destroy the law of the prophets. I have come not to destroy but to fulfill. Simple. I am asking you, do you have pork, brother? I'm sorry? Do you have pork? Yeah, I um, occasionally. That means you're not a good Christian. You aren't a good Christian. Even occasionally you break one law or a title, you shall not go to Jannah. Not Quran says that. Bible says that. Even if you have pork and you break one law or a title, you shall not go to paradise. You shall not enter eternal life. And you said that you are a practicing Christian. You said you believe Jesus Christ is God. I don't believe Jesus is God, but I follow his teachings. I love him more than you. This is what Jesus said. It's from the heart. This is the explanation of your words. It's from my heart. I love him. I love Jesus Christ. Peace be upon him. Do you? I don't think so. It is I theoretical, do. not I from do. your heart. Verbally, yes. No, I do very strongly. So if you strongly believe in Jesus Christ, peace be upon him, why are you disobeying him? Why? Why are you disobeying him? I don't, I didn't think, oh, I don't think I am disobeying him until now. But I'm quoting you from the Bible, Gospel of Matthew, chapter 5, verse 17. Think not, I have come to destroy okay. the law of the prophets. Okay. And I've given you quotation from Leviticus chapter 11, verse 7 to 8, Deuteronomy chapter 14, verse number 8, Book of Isaiah chapter 65, verse number 2 to 5. References. Okay, if that's the case, in the Old Testament it is said that an eye for an eye, a tooth for a tooth. But what did Jesus Christ say? If somebody slaps you, show him the other side. Now, what is, is isn't that like a defying of the law? No, it's not correction? defying. I will give you what you're quoting is references from the Gospel of Matthew chapter number 5, verse number 38. Okay. I will give the quotation. I don't, has, I don't want the quotation. I want the answer for my question. But first I'll give the quotation reference, then I'll give the answer. Na? Fine, fine. I always give with proof. You believe without proof, you can do that. I'm a man of proof with references from okay. your scripture. Okay. Gospel of Matthew, chapter number 5, verse number 38. It has been said of the old times that an eye for an eye and tooth for a tooth. But I say unto you, whosoever takes a shirt, give him the cloak. Whoever walks with you one mile, walk with him twain. Whosoever offers you one cheek, offer him the other. That's it. It doesn't mean that he's going against it. But he's showing it, a... it has been said of the old times. But those two laws don't correspond. They are totally different. They're totally against each other. But those things, what Jesus Christ, peace be upon him, said, it's time to get remedy. People misunderstood. They misunderstood the law. An eye for an eye, tooth for a tooth means they should be just. That doesn't mean someone by mistake, a child is playing cricket, and if the ball hits the eye, that doesn't mean you break his eye. People misunderstood the message. He was correcting it. Same way how you misunderstood the message that Jesus said had folk. Where did he say have folk? It means that people misunderstood. They are following the law by the letter, not by the spirit. What you have to realize that it means that if by mistake someone is playing cricket and suppose the ball hits the eye, that doesn't mean that you have to take the eye of the boy. So you have to follow the law in the spirit. And you have to see the meaning of it. That's important. That's what Jesus Christ, peace be upon him, tried to explain. I'm asking the question, will you follow Jesus Christ, peace be upon Lord today? If someone slaps you on one cheek, will you offer the other? There are many people waiting in the queue. Will you do that? I'm sorry? There are many people waiting in the queue. Okay. Will you follow Jesus Christ? If someone slaps you, will you offer the other? No, will but that is wrong then. According to me, it is wrong. According to you, it is correct, na? You believe Jesus Christ is your God, peace be upon him. Yes. If someone slaps you, will you offer the other so you can come on the stage here? We'll have many people slapping you. I didn't understand actually. It's Jesus, not clear. That verse of the Bible also says someone slaps you on one cheek, offer the other. Yeah. Do you believe in that law? I do, yes. So if someone slaps you, will you offer the other cheek? Exactly. If I don't, that means I'm disobeying his laws. That's okay. It. Suppose if I tell that from today, everyone will come and hit you on the cheek. Maybe once or twice you'll offer. Will you offer always? Well, uh, that depends on my depth of the faith. I mean, if I'm really a strong believer, then I would definitely offer. Is any Christian worth the name born today who will keep on offering his cheek? 
I have not met anyone. Do you agree? There are 30,000 people here, 30,000 slaps. Will you take? But believe me, there are really true believers who would. I am asking you, will you leave us as a will you? I don't know. That we are not a believer. That's well, what we realize it is. I don't know. Therefore, the what we realize that every prophet came and for remedy. Today, Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam has come. And he said, depending upon the situation, if it's by mistake, an eye for an eye and tooth for a tooth is wrong. If it is required, sometimes you can offer your cheek, but not always. If always, if you offer the cheek, where is justice? If that way someone kills you, you allow them to kill again? Is this justice? It's not justice at all. Depending upon the situation, you have to keep on changing. Therefore, I say that I believe in the teachings of Jesus Christ, peace be upon him, which match with the Quran. If it doesn't match with the Quran, what I say, it's an interpolation, it's a concoction, it's a fabrication. Because everything written in the Bible is not the word of God. According to scholars of Christianity, they say there are many interpolations in the Bible. There are many concoctions, there are many fabrications. According to Christian journals, they say there are 50,000 errors in the Bible. How many? 50,000. So therefore, I don't consider the Bible to be the word of God. There are many unscientific things mentioned in the Bible. If you read the book of Genesis, you know, I can give a lecture only on it's the okay. contradictions, on unscientific things. I don't consider the word of God. Do you consider the Bible to be the word of God? Yes. Okay. Now, doing the book of Genesis, chapter number one. Yes. Verse number 16. It says, Almighty God created two lights. The greater light, the sun, to rule the day, the lesser light, the moon, to rule the night. Bible says the light of the moon is its own light. Do you believe in that? The light of the moon is? Is its own light. Do you believe in that? No. That we don't believe in the Bible. <laughs> Bible says in the book of Genesis, chapter number 1, verse number 14, Almighty God, He created the earth on the third day, created the sun on the fourth day. That means the earth and vegetables came before and sun came later on. Do you know science, brother? I'm sorry? Do you, do you know science? Yes. The Bible says earth came first and then came sun. Is it correct? I don't know. No. Scientifically, is it correct? Uh, the earth came first and? Then the sun came. Earth came on the third day, sun came on the fourth day. Is it possible? We okay. know the sun is the parent body in the solar system. All the planets that revolve around the sun, they are the bodies from the sun. You know the Big Bang? Yes. So it is created simultaneously. But the Bible says earth on the third day, along with vegetables, sun on the fourth day. How can the vegetables survive without sunlight? Is if, it possible? If, if God can make it that way, why not? But do you believe in that? See, what God can do, but will God do something which is wrong? Illogical thing God will do. See, reasoning with God, I don't, I don't think it is in our scope. It is beyond our scope. It is not in your scope, but in the scope of human beings like me. God has to be logical. You can't be illogical. Then if you say illogical, then you believe every monkey, any stone, any tree is God. But, but what, Whether, we... what our brothers in India do? Everything is God for them. And then you say, don't argue with God. Don't reason with God. So then you start worshipping the stone also. Brother, you can't be illogical. Seek the truth, the truth shall free you. Thank you. So hope you seek the truth, brother. Sure. I appreciate the patience of the uh, questioners. Should we have the next question from the sister? Good evening. My name is Mylene. I'm working in printing industry. I really praise God for your life, Dr. Naik. And I truly believe that you are an army of God. And I feel so blessed to be here. Thank you. Yes, I'm a Mujahid. <laughs> Mujahid means soldier of God. I consider myself a soldier of God. And thank you, because I say I'm a mujahid. I'm a da'i and a servant of God, Jazakallah. Sister, do you have any questions? Yes. Um, according to Jeremiah 29, 11, uh, for God knows the plan he has prepared for each and every one of us, plans to prosper us and not to harm us, plans to give us hope and a future. That's why uh, some of women, we believe that they have a gift of celibacy. We're in, uh, you know, that nuns and some women, they're very happy, unmarried. That's because they have a gift of celibacy. Now, Islam believe on that. And if not, 
what is the best motivational verse that you can give, which is based in Quran, for those women who is second, third, or fourth wife? Sister asked the question, quoting Jeremiah, she said that the future is with God and some women are blessed to be celibacy, that means they should not marry. And what do I have to say and what does the Quran say about that? Sister, in Islam, there is no monasticism in Islam. You cannot renounce the world. Our beloved Prophet said that anyone who does not marry is not of me. According to me, it is compulsory to marry in Islam. The Prophet said anyone who does not marry is not of me. To marry is compulsory. Regarding those women who are blessed, you know, you are referring to the nuns, correct sister? Nuns, yes. Now if you see the statistics, if you see the statistics of the priest, those who have given up the world, you know, the fathers and the nuns, in England, the statistics say that more than 60%, more than 60% of the priest and the nuns, they involve in adultery. More than 60% even involved in homosexuality. So what is this celibacy you're talking about? Medically, it's not possible. Medically, it's not possible for a woman or a man to remain virgin throughout the life without indulging in illicit sex. It's not possible. Because sex hormones are being liberated, sister. It may look to the world that she is following celibacy. It's not possible. It's not possible. Because sex hormones are being liberated, sister. So therefore, if you see the statistics, that is the reason the Protestants what they say, a priest can marry. It is the Catholics who say that the nuns and the fathers cannot marry. But the pastors in Protestantism, they can marry. If you are a Catholic, they say that you should not marry. But in the Bible, nowhere does it say that you should not marry. Nowhere does it say. It is St. Paul saying that, not Jesus Christ. St. Paul saying that, yeah, I would prefer not marrying rather than burning. St. Paul, not Jesus Christ, peace be upon him. Jesus Christ never said that you should lead a life of celibacy. That is the reason in Islam, marrying is compulsory, and the Prophet said, a person who does not marry is not of me. Hope that answers the question, sister. Yeah, thank you. And uh, one more. Uh, do you believe in the second coming of Jesus Christ? Sister, that was the question that do I believe in the second coming of Jesus Christ? Yes, I believe. It's mentioned in the Bible, he'll come again. It's mentioned in the Quran also, he'll come again. But what is the reason that Jesus Christ, peace be upon him, will come again? The reason is because, as Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says in the Quran, in Surah Nisa, chapter number 4, verse number 158, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala raised up Isa alayhi salam alive. Jesus Christ alive. The reason is, he was the only messenger whose followers as a whole mistook that he claimed divinity. All the other messengers, none of their followers as a whole, misunderstood that the messenger was God. Because there was a misunderstanding in the followers, Almighty God raised him up alive. It's further mentioned in Surah Maida, chapter number 5, verse number 116. Jesus Christ, peace be upon rest to Almighty God. On that day, I will come in the second coming. And I will bear witness. I never told them to worship me. But I said, Oh, Budullah, worship Allah, Rabbi wa Rabbukum, who is my Lord and your Lord. He will come in the second coming to testify to the Christian. He never told them that worship me. He never said that he was almighty God. So he'll come in the second coming to testify to the Christian that this is a big mistake. Same thing is mentioned in the Bible, in the Gospel of John. On that day when people will come, Oh Lord, Oh Master, did we not do wonders and miracles in your name? So Jesus Christ will say, Amen, you depart from here. I don't even know you. So Jesus Christ will say, I don't know these people. You did miracles in my name, I don't even know you. So he never claimed he was God. In his second coming, he will clarify this misconception. That's the reason God kept him alive in his second coming, so that no one can say that Jesus Christ, peace be upon him, claimed divinity. Hope that answers the question, sister. Thank you. And one last question. Um, Makkah is the same as the Holy of Holies in the Bible? Makkah? Yes. Yes. There is mention of Makkah in the Bible. If you read in the book of Psalms, chapter number 84, verse number 4 to 7, it says that blessed are those people who travel to the valley of Bakka. Now, Bakka is another name for Mecca, which is mentioned in the Quran in Surah Al Imran, chapter number 3, verse number 96. The first place for worship was Bakka. So, Bakka is another name for Mecca, which is also mentioned in the Bible that blessed are those people who travel to the valley of Bakka. Hope that answers the question, sister. Thank you very much.